Hello, welcome to Baltic World. My name is Chris Burnt. It's been a few days, apologies for that. A lot to catch up on with Ukraine. I want to start with some of the diplomatic maneuverings because they're quite revealing. Russia has laid down what it says are its conditions for ceasing military action. And they're as follows. Number one, Ukraine to recognize Crimea as part of Russia and the independence of Donbass and Luhansk. Two, Ukraine must alter its constitution to never allow itself to join NATO or the EU or any other foreign bloc. And three, to limit the size of its armed forces to 60,000. And four, to cease military operations against the Russian forces. Now, while this sounds insane and it is, Putin has rolled back his victory conditions in Ukraine. Remember at the outset, the plan for military operation was to quote-unquote, denazify the country, i.e. regime change. Install a government that is sympathetic to Russia in Kiev, uh, roll into Ukraine with Russian flags waving and people throwing flowers and welcoming them as liberators as the Zelensky government imminently falls. Far from the Zelensky government falling, the people of Ukraine have rallied firmly behind its leader and even in those areas that were previously pro-Putin, such as Odessa, have turned staunchly nationalist in the face of overt Russian aggression. So there is no prospect of installing a pro-Russian government in Kiev that's going to last and be stable and turn uh, Ukraine into a stalwart buffer state versus the West. And the Russian government is finally facing up to that reality. So it has rolled back some of its victory conditions. Now, it is highly improbable that Zelensky is going to accept conditions that are essentially a Russian victory, while the Ukrainian people are putting up such a valiant defense of the homeland and inflicting such high casualties on the Russian army. And that begs the question, what would Zelensky accept as termination of hostilities. And I think at a minimum, withdrawal of Russian forces completely from Ukraine, including Donbass, Luhansk and Crimea, recognition that all of that territory was part of Ukraine, no limitation on the size of Ukrainian armed forces. However, in exchange, Ukraine would alter its constitution to bar it from joining NATO and perhaps even the European Union. And that's because Zelensky has cooled on this idea because he understands that there is no appetite among the other NATO members to accept an Article 5 commitment. Therefore, it would be a recognition of reality that Ukraine is not going to join NATO, and therefore there's nothing to be lost in agreeing to change constitution if it means ending the hostilities with Russia and restoring Ukraine's territorial integrity. Conversely, this is beyond what Russia can accept. There is no way that Russia is going to willingly hand Crimea back to Ukraine. It would have great difficulty relinquishing control of Donbass and Luhansk, having already recognized them as independent territories and occupied them with considerable amounts of Russia's armed forces to withdraw in a graceful way even with a change to Ukraine's constitution, would be a challenge for Russia. The problem for Moscow is that if it leaves a nationalist government in Kiev while carving off the most pro-Russia parts of Ukraine away from the national government, then the democracy in Ukraine is going to be even more pro-Western than it is already. Therefore, Russia will have achieved a minor military success in eastern part of Ukraine, but a massive strategic defeat because instead of having a bulwark buffer state against NATO, it will have invited an expansion of NATO to completely surround Russia on its western periphery. A disaster in everything that Putin was seeking to avoid. And speaking of disasters, Putin's invasion of Ukraine thus far has not gone to plan. CIA director William Burns, who is a Russia expert, he used to be America's ambassador to Russia, he testified before Congress yesterday and he said that Putin's invasion of Ukraine rested on four assumptions. The first, that Ukraine was weak. The second, um, Europe was divided. Third, that Russia could withstand sanctions. And fourth, that the military had been modernized and would achieve a swift victory. In fact, Russia projected it would have captured Kiev in the first two days of invasion. All of those assumptions have been proven utterly 
false. And the recriminations in Putin's inner circle are now running rife. Putin has placed several senior intelligence officials from the FSB under house arrest on trumped up charges, basically blaming them for the failures of preparation and execution that we have seen in Ukraine thus far. And what failures these are, so far three Russian generals are confirmed to have been killed in action in Ukraine. That's three out of 20. That is a huge attrition rate for senior military leaders in this stage of a modern conflict. Current US estimates are that four to 6,000 Russian military personnel have lost their lives in the first two weeks of hostilities. Ukraine puts that projection a little higher. Even at the low end, America did not suffer that attrition in five years of Iraq war and insurgency. So that tells you just how much of a meat grinder Ukraine has become for the Russian armed forces. Despite 24 hour a day bombardment, Russian aircraft continue to be downed at a rate of knots. They are unable to provide support to Russia's advancing ground forces in contested areas, something that the Russian military would not have dreamt of at this stage of the conflict. In fact, Ukraine's anti-aircraft capabilities continue to improve, not only with Stinger missiles flowing into the country, but a Polish-designed anti-aircraft weapon has proven very effective against Russian jets, but the big thing is that the United States has moved the Patriot missile defense system to Poland, not to Ukraine, but that will allow Ukrainians to be trained on this highly complex anti-aircraft platform. It's extremely expensive and difficult to operate, but it provides a capability of striking high level Russian aircraft over very long ranges if the Patriot missile defense system entered into the conflict in Ukraine operated by Ukrainians, that would be a game-changing capability for downing Russian aircraft in Ukrainian skies. Meanwhile, the drones that are provided by Turkey to Ukraine are proving devastating to Russian armor. The Ukrainians have been adept at executing ambushes against convoys from the air. Indeed, one of the generals that I mentioned before that was killed in action was almost certainly killed by one of these strikes. And the Russians seem to be running low on precision ordnance. They are relying increasingly on cluster bombs, unguided bombs that are far less accurate and effective against the Ukrainian military and incur unacceptable numbers of civilian casualties. We are seeing this war playing out in a more devastating and piecemeal way. Russia's economy is finished. All international ratings agencies have reduced Russia's credit rating to a junk status. It's unable to secure foreign currency other than the one. Uh, it's been cut off from the SWIFT payment system, Google Pay, they've all been ceased. Foreign companies are withdrawing their services from Russia in droves. McDonald's is closing 850 stores across Russia. Uh, Pepsi has announced it's closing its doors. Coca-Cola will no longer be sold in Russia. And then of course the combat losses are incredibly difficult to replace. War is an expensive enterprise. Russia's economy cannot sustain it. European countries are looking for alternatives to Russian gas and oil. Russia's elite is being choked. Most famously, Roman Abrevich, who owns Chelsea Football Club. His assets have been seized. He can't sell Chelsea. Many super yachts have been seized in various ports around Europe taken as war booty, as punishment for those that are supporting Putin's regime. And the Russian government is relying on ever more repressive measures against its own people. Uh, I mentioned before that TikTok and Facebook had been blocked. Uh, YouTube and Instagram are the latest victims. I suspect Twitter will be close to follow. And so Russia is creating its own great firewall, uh, cutting its people off from the rest of the internet and the global environment. Russia is putting out polling to suggest that Putin's popularity has gone up. That doesn't surprise me. There's always a rally around the flag moment, particularly when backed by huge amounts of propaganda. But we would also do well to remember that Tsar Nicholas II had a huge boost to his popularity at the outset of World War I. But when the soldiers came back to Russia, well, they had something to say about that. And thus we enter a dangerous phase for Putin's regime. As the losses mount, as disillusioned and demoralized troops return home, organized politically, 
Well, Russia has historic experience in what happens when things like this turn into shambolic disasters. So as I speak right now, it is unquestionably the case that judged by Russia's victory conditions, Ukraine has denied those conditions and is winning this war. That said, the worst phase is about to commence. I said at the very beginning of all this that this conflict will be won or lost in Kiev. If Ukraine can hold on to the capital, it will win the war. If it loses Kiev, Russia will be in such a strong bargaining position vis-a-vis -vis the Ukrainian people that it can terminate hostilities and claim victory at home. And it seems that the Russian military has worked this out as well. So even though after two weeks, Kiev has not been completely encircled, Russia is moving the vast majority of its divisions to concentrate on the capital. And this is regrettably the correct move for Russia's military strategically at this stage of the conflict. Close off and isolate the other theaters of conflict, Kharkiv, Sumy, Mariupol, make it difficult for the Ukrainian forces to break out or conduct counteroffensive against the Russian rear forces. It's, you don't need to clear out those territories. Shift the vast bulk of Russia's military to join the assault on Kiev. That is where this will either be the Battle of Paris of 1940 or the Battle of Stalingrad in 42. It will be where the war is won or lost by Russia's forces, and it's going to throw everything at the Battle of Kiev, and I will keep you updated with how those events unfold, but Kiev, its darkest days are immediately ahead of it. Russia is going to throw all of its divisions to try and take that city. If it fails, Russia loses the war. If it succeeds, it could terminate hostilities, negotiating away the capital on basis that are favorable to Putin and Putin's Russia. Thank you very much for watching. Leave your thoughts and opinions down below, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.